Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Enhanced and Radio School Day meeting of August 21st, 2024, reminding you that this is the tape, uh, so you can see it on the Community Access Channel. So if everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before uh, I ask for a moment of silence, I would like to say a few words about Fred. Um, and as everyone knows that um, Fred died of um, his, um, can you hear me? Yep, I think so. Can you hear back there? No. 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 How about now? Just you, if you are louder, I think it will be fine. Oh, okay. So just speak loud. Okay. Um, so um, I've known Fred for many, many years. Um, Fred and I were kind of adversaries when I was on the um, negotiating team for the Whitman Hansen um, Union. And uh, Fred would bargain against the union. Um, so we had many little um, disagreements, shall we say. Um, and also on the board, but we will miss Fred. Fred was a voice. Fred was a voice of the town equipment. Fred was a voice for the students. Um, he was always here for that. He even came when he was ill. He would try to make the meetings. Um, I will personally miss him because the last year or so he has been, he was uh, calling me about once a week to update on how he was doing and how he was feeling and other issues that he might have had. Uh, we would miss him on the building committee. He was the chair of the Whitman Middle School Building Committee, so he would be missed there too. Uh, Fred was always the one to tell us what was going on on Capitol Hill. He was always up to date on all that news, and that would again be missed. I know he was on a town committee, the Capitol Committee uh, representative there, um, so I know that that would be but he was what, 15 years? Yes. Yeah, he was in his third, third, third term. term. In his third term. Um, so uh, big shoes to fill, um, and unfortunately, that we had to do this. But I would like to dedicate this moment of silence to Fred uh, from all of us, please. And thank you. Okay. Um, we have duo training to start. So, Mr. Right. I was going to say, so duo, tra duo is our two-factor authentication program that all our faculty uses when they log into their machines in the morning to make sure that that's another safeguard that we have post-breach uh, to make sure that we aren't infiltrated again by some outside source. So Brian, our network administrator, is going to walk you through that duo training. If something is missed through Brian or if you have questions after the fact, I'm more than happy, George and I are more than happy to go through this with you um, to make sure that you can access your devices both in the building and outside of school. Do always, we'll, we'll work from your home as well. Anytime you log into the Whitman Hanson account that you have. Go ahead, Brian. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is log into your I had it up on the screen here if you guys want to follow along. If you just open up a tab and I'm going to show you this page. I'm trying. Can I just do it on my phone? Probably can turn it. What about you? I think you turn it. Actually, you can probably do it on my phone. I'm not connected to the network for some reason. Let's keep saying the name of the password. Am I on the wrong network? Maybe. Sorry. You got JC. <laughs> I actually have Duo for my own district already loaded up here. They said it should be pretty seamless, so maybe that'll save you some of that problem. Uh, maybe that's on the wrong network. No, it should be on the wrong network. Oh, it should be on the wrong network. Okay. Thank you. 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 Okay. If you want Duo on your phone, you can go to the App Store on your iPhone or Google and type well, in the we have, uh, physical keys. You have if you keys don't want to as well. Your phone. 
is if you have an option, whatever you want to use. Do a little model? Is that what it is? Okay. Yes. That's good. Okay, perfect. Thank you. May I have some assistance, please? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sir, I have to click on this. I see what you mean. Let's see what you mean. Let's just try to get you. As we can see, I don't have to. Thank you. Yep. Same here. Sorry. Would it be that my passport is expired? Because I know we have to change it after so many. Yeah, do you remember the one the last time you changed it? Was it over a year ago? Okay, so it could be. Mm -hmm. reset here. Okay, thank you. It's just saying that it's incorrect. So I'll, I'll, you can continue on. I'll work with that. I'm not sure if you have Okay, well, I can use it. Let me know. All right. Do you have a Google page on top if you want to click the Gmail button? So you can see the Gmail button at the top, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You click on that. And then you want to click on sign in. And that's going to ask for the email address. The email address would be your first name dot last name at whrsd.org. Email address, you should see a single sign on screen, which is the uh, dual. That thing you want to type in your email address one more time. This went right, to, right into my email. I didn't get to that screen. Should I log out and log back in? Sorry, this went when I clicked on Gmail, it took me right to my email. It didn't take me to this screen in between. Should I try logging out and logging out? Uh, yes, it okay. may have been. Okay, maybe yeah, I just already I did. I was checking my email uh, earlier okay. before I came, so that's probably what I got sent out. That's exactly what happened. Is that okay? Yeah. So it recognizes you. There we go. That looks good. Now, do you want to go close back? Here. Close go back. back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gee, is that, uh, is that still Google? The yeah, yeah, it is. You have to sign out of that. Oh, I do have both of it? Okay. Any, anything Google. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all of the things. Yes. Okay, there we go. There you yeah. go. Let me open up Chrome again. There we go. Okay. So click on Gmail. Right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Thanks. Right, and I'm going to put that in yep. again. Type in your email address. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Right. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, you, so you won't email hit my address. truck. Type in your password. If anybody gets an invalid 
what my subject asked for. Yeah, I'm sitting here. And, then, okay. and I was already in my email, so you said a lot now, just like now, and now it says a lot now. Yeah, that's just like that. Try some password. Try to use some password. Try to use some password. So they're going to HRC, you can have to give you a view. So you don't have to do the password. Folks, too, things twice, once it's done. Once it's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you want to use the token, or would you want to give that one to the app? I have. Also, do first name. Oh, okay. Is that for this? Yeah, you... So, the temporary password is capital W. Close this H. Alright. Yes. Yeah. Ding. Change the zero to the right. What's that? Change it to zero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's so I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same issue as John. So I, I'm sorry, why didn't hear what you said with WHRSD and try that instead? Oh. Try that, yeah. Is it me? What are you? Not you. It's okay. 2024. Oh, okay. I, mean, I would yeah, have used the other one. I, I know. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. Uh, capital W. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we continue to have problems, I think, we'll uh, finish this the next meeting. Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 Must have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I use fourth at 2024.com. Okay. Oh. Oh, I remember these back in the day. You logged out, right? Yeah, I didn't even do that. Sorry. So, Brian, we're just going to move on. We'll, we'll, I'll get the specifics of the Plus, we're also missing All right. I'll get this. Couple numbers. So, We'll, no, we'll move on. If I have specific questions, they'll relate to you through text or um, yeah. George and I will figure it out. Yeah, because I okay. think I need to change my, I'm pretty we'll, sure I need to change my camera. And then I'm we will probably going to generate a new number. Yeah. 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 If it needs to choose, we can work with yeah. them and get offset. Yep. Okay. Thank Thank you. Right. Thanks, Brian and Jason. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're going to move on. Next, Thanks we have the okay. uh, meeting minutes yeah. between 5th and 24th. Just the yeah, yeah, I, can create, I can create my focus. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Motion was done. David was second. Okay. Are there any questions? Any discussion? Okay. And we don't have anybody on the phone, so all in favor? Okay. Okay. Unanimous. Uh, superintendent's report, please. So um, in, the, in the gallery today, we have two wonderful brand new administrators that I'd like to introduce to the committee. Um, it's been a little bit of a turnover since last, you know, uh, calendar year in 2025, we've had some, some turnover. You've met Stephen Marshall, the new director of business and finance, and he'll be reporting out later on today. We have new staff in the buildings, um, but we had a new principal uh, at, for the Duval School with the resignation of Dr. Foley. I'd like to introduce Dr. John Marcus. John, if you don't mind hitting the podium. A little bit about John. He was a longtime elementary teacher, principal, then became the assistant superintendent in um, Sharon and technology. So John's going to fix all your Duval problems today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his other half. And then he served as the superintendent in Stoughton for a few years and then went back to his passion, which is elementary principal. And we were lucky enough to have to have him come over from Norton and be the leader of the Duval Dolphins. 
and he's got a nice little YouTube video that's going to be out soon yep. of, of a dolphin. <laughs> so, yep. uh, John, if you could just introduce yourself a little bit and say a few words. And Thanks so much. I appreciate being here. Uh, it's uh, It's been an absolutely wonderful summer meeting uh, all kinds of incredibly dedicated staff, students, families. Um, uh, I feel very privileged uh, to be able to be the principal over at Duval uh, and, and very privileged to be able to work with uh, the central administration team. Uh, I worked with Jeff uh, side by side during COVID and it was, uh, and he's always been absolutely phenomenal, a uh, great colleague and a wonderful leader. And so I feel very privileged uh, to be able to work with you and uh, George and Nikki. So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Look forward to uh, some more Dolphin Pride uh, as we uh, as we head into 24-25. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, with the resignation of Michael Loesch to become the executive director of Social Collaborative, uh, a few phone calls were made and, and Dr. Godino was very interested in coming to Whitman Hanson. Dr. Godino he was a special education teacher, a director of special education, an assistant superintendent for the town of Avon, and a superintendent for the town of Avon, and then came back to her true passion for special education. I'd like to introduce Dr. Christine Godino as our director of special education. Hello. I will not have a video for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I um, echo Dr. Marcus's remarks where it's been a wonderful experience transitioning here. Um, through the extended school year programs and enrichment programs, I've got to meet, gotten to meet quite a few of our students and staff, and um, it's really a joy to be here. The, the staff I've met are extremely talented and dedicated to the students in central offices, giving me such a warm welcome. It, um, it is a breath of fresh air, and I'm really excited to be here. So thank you. Thanks, Christine. Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Welcome. So, so through your emails, you know it was a pretty busy summer too, administratively over on the Hanson side of, of the train tracks. Uh, Dr. Joel Jocelyn became the assistant superintendent, and Sharon, uh, not replacing John, but in a similar, they, they've had some uh, some conversation. Um, so Joel left in in July. We posted for the position, and, and through our screening team, which considered uh, consisted of central administration principals, uh, teachers, and some parents, uh, we couldn't find a, bio, a candidate that we thought would be a good fit for Indian Head. So after that search, um, we made a, a, a move to move Bill Tranter the principal of Hanson Middle School to do a dual role. You all know Bill, so I didn't invite him here. Uh, and then as things shook out a little bit last week. George and Nikki and I are not necessarily weren't super comfortable with Bill doing a dual role because it's extremely difficult uh, and it's really not the best for staff and students. Um, we had a heart to heart with uh, Josh Belvis, the assistant principal, and he uh, is now the interim principal at Hanson Middle School. Bill is the Indian head principal, love and life. He had a funky little hat on today that he's going to be wearing around town, um, but really has been rejuvenated. I think this committee all knows Josh. Josh will be here at some point mm -hmm. presenting. Um, we are now in the process of inter interviewing an interim assistant principal, which the interviews will go on tomorrow. So Hanson Middle School administrative team will be solid, uh, hopefully by Friday. They're all internal candidates, so it's all people uh, George, Nikki, and I know very well, uh, and we're very confident that one of the any of the three that are selected will be, will be solid. Um, which means if one of those folks get the job or be looking for an interim, it's a domino effect as we go. Um, but it is a new leadership team uh, from central office and at the building base level. Um, and we are pretty confident, very confident in all of the leaders that we have that it will be a collaborative approach throughout this, the school year. And our kids are in awesome hands with the folks that we have with boots on the ground in our building. So, and I, like I said, Stephen feels like old hat now. He's been here since since June, uh, <laughs> and we were able to introduce him uh, in the early spring. So those are our new admins. We do have a new assistant principal at, at Duval, and I, I will have um, Ashley Craig come over at some point and introduce herself. But she was busy putting things together for open house and things like that. So, and um, not adding a night for her uh, is something that I didn't want to do at this point. Um, so. Those are our new admins. Um, going into uh, summer and uh, and how we are moving forward to the fall. Summer's busy at Whitman Hanson and we never ever close. Um, this summer we ran our pre-K ESY, uh, both a three week and a five week program. At Conley we had Camp Conley for three weeks. Duval had our ESY program uh, for five weeks. Uh, the Whitman Middle School ran a six week summer sports camp. 
Hanson Middle School had a four-week summer sports camp, and the high school had a robotics camp, a 3D camp, a science camp, uh, sports camps, both basketball and soccer. The uh, uh, Plymouth County Dare Camp was here. Uh, we had our 21st century summer program for high school and middle school summer students, which was an enrichment program for four weeks. Our ESY for high school was also here, and, uh, and we had traditional summer school. Um, so as we tour, and I'm gonna go into, as we tour tomorrow, the facilities department had a, had a heavy load because our buildings were being used for the majority of the summer. So it crunches down into the last two, two to three weeks of summer for us to build our buildings back up for our students who will be arriving, can't leave to say it, a week from today. Um, they will be coming in. The past three days, we had new teacher orientation. We have hired 21 new staff members who were placed vacancies due to terminations, uh, maternity leaves. Uh, we had uh, quite a few, not quite a few, but more than I like uh, teachers not returning and want to stay home for an additional year with their, with their children. Uh, resignations and retirement. We did not add any new positions to our teaching staff. However, some will say, well, did you add positions? Well, we did. We ended up adding a few one-to-ones for students who we need to accommodate their IEPs or their individualized education plans uh, per, per federal requirements if they are required to have a one-to-one. -one. So there might be some new additions. People say, oh, you only had you know 105 paras last year. This year you have 110. Well, it's because we have to follow the guidelines of certain students' IEPs based upon their individual needs. The other piece that I, I need to let the committee know is this year in particular, we have a greater amount of medical need from students that are severe medical need. Uh, it's not like you know changing a Band-Aid every now and then for our school nurses, and the school nurse position has bloomed mm -hmm. blossomed over the years, treating students with diabetes and other types of illness. But this year in particular, we have a heavier need, or medical need for students. So you might hear, or you might hear uh, from some students, the clinic was closed for 15 or 20 minutes because that nurse is doing a medical procedure. And we don't have a float nurse for that day. That doesn't mean the students aren't gonna get medical care or if there's an emergent need, but if somebody's got, needs a cough drop or need, may have to go to the office for that cough drop for 15 or 20 minutes uh, because we have some severe medical needs, mostly on the Hanson side, but Whitman is not without their fair share of students that have those needs. Oh, and preschool, and, and you know, we're on, yeah. Preschool absolutely has um, more, than, more than three students that have severe medical issues this year. Luckily, we've been able to staff our nurses with some floaters, and we have a lead nurse, uh, and at this point, that suffices. Lisa Tobin said we're good, but if something crashes midway through, I might be coming to the committee saying, I have had to hire more medical care for our students. Um, I don't think this is a, a trend, it's not gonna ebb and flow, but we're probably gonna have more students coming in with different medical needs because we're an inclusive district and we wanna have the least restrictive environment for not only our students who have develop, developmental challenges, educational challenges, but medical challenges as well. Uh, some of these students might have ended up at the Mass Hospital School years ago, but we're trying to make sure that they're here for the best educational experience in their hometown that they can have. So, I will brief you with, with those as we go through the course of the year. Um, our buildings and grounds are prepped, ready to go. We're gonna have a tour tomorrow. Uh, you'll be able to see some things. Also today, uh, the state has put in a new IEP or new individual education plan program. So we had new IEP training for those staff that were here today. And I just wanted to give you an idea of where we're at enrollment wise because that's always, I don't have class sizes yet. I wanna see how things flesh out. Our counseling department has been a little crazy the past couple of days, uh, but our high school right now, as it is, we have 992 students registered, uh, nine through 12 at the high school. 14 students additionally are registered for CES or our community evening school. Indian Ed School has 503 students with 92 uh, kindergarten students. Five teachers, that's, I will tell you where we're at with Kay. They have five staff members for 92. Hanson Middle School has 451 students registered, five through eight. Whitman Middle School has 501 uh, registered, six through eight. Duval has 427, uh, 73 of which are kindergarten students, and Conley has 493, 71, or 74, which are K students. Conley and Duval have four sections each for K. So we have plenty of staff for our kindergartners, and by way of making another shock, the class of 2037 has 239 <laughs> students. So our K students, the class of 237, 
I'm going to be a long line. Uh, <laughs> 239 students registered, which is actually, I did a little backtracking. Um, it's down, but now we can anticipate that coming forward. Um, the, the NESDEC survey that we did when we did the middle school um, building project has been pretty online. We should be pretty consistent with the 70s in kindergarten, with Hanson being a little bit more because it's just one town. We should be pretty consistent. So planning forward in 10 years, I think that's going to be your, your freshman class size minus whatever goes to vocational programs. But we might be under 200 um, by 2027 for that class. So it's good for the committee to know. It's good for the towns to have an idea. And I encourage both towns when they start talking building projects, which will be an Indian head, Collier Duval in the next 10 to 15 years, um, start looking at enrollment um, because those buildings are not getting any any younger um, and it might be some time to discuss merging one or, or combining some things not saying that yet but just something for the committee to know before we open opening <coughs> day um, any questions about uh, opening or summer review okay uh, in your packet we have a very brief uh, for handbook approval um, dr. Jones in the high school handbook they didn't make any major modifications in it this year. Um, so I'm just looking for a motion and an approval of the two changes um, that Chris had updated uh, on vision of the graduate and student tardy, uh, excuse me, there are more that I didn't see back to back. Um, just sort of the handbook changes as, as is, or, or if you have any questions, I was hoping Chris might be here, but he's running freshman orientation concurrent with the school committee meeting tonight. Um, but I just need a motion and acceptance of, of these handbook discussions or handbook changes. Just so you know, this was Chris has a handbook committee that's run by the Dean of Students, Chris Guggins, with uh, students and teachers. And then he brings this to a school council, which has students and parents. The committee approved it. The school council approved it with no issue. I'm bringing it to the school committee. So it's, it's what the, the staff members, the students and the parents of the school council have uh, voted on and have submitted to you. Okay, can I, do I have somebody motion, please? So moved. And second? Second. David? Okay, all those in favor? Yep, discussion. Yep. Um, I was hoping Dr. Jones was going to be here because I did have a question. Um, so I'll phrase so, it. Um, two things. One, on the tardiness. So it, on the first page, mm -hmm. it appears that he's making the change to accommodate more tardies before before getting in trouble. Right. Yeah. Before, before consequences. Before disciplinary yep. action. So I more or less wanted to ask, you know, the reasoning for that. Um, and then at the top it says that calendar bell schedules and staff updates will be updated as needed. So I didn't know what updates to the bell schedule he might anticipate. Um, do you? So let me just go with the tardy. I, I don't disagree with adding that fourth um, because really it's a, it's a, a Kids come in tardy for a variety of reasons, and sometimes it's two minutes. And no matter the, the consequence is the same consequence, whether you're two minutes late or eight minutes late or half hour late. So we've had this discussion for years. Um, a tardy policy is is something that I'm, I'm not, I don't love tardy policies because we've actually seen, George and I have seen kids turn around in the parking lot so they don't get a consequence. I'd rather mm -hmm. get them in here. So I think giving those students an opportunity to maybe have four um, and having those, those Coachable, coachable conversations about why, and then having some flexibility isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I believe this probably came right from the kids themselves. They want a little bit more, yeah. but the parents are, are the same, especially with the traffic patterns that we have. As far as the calendar and bell schedule, um, I think he he is putting in a new schedule right now, and that necessarily wasn't ready when we put this together in June. I don't think he's updated it. But if you have a, a further question on that, what I can do is shoot him a text. We can table this conversation for a little bit more. He is in the building, and I'll just shoot him a text if he, if he can get here and answer those questions. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, if I make an assumption, he's probably thinking it might need to be, if it needs to be a tweak a minute here, a minute yes. there, around yes. lunch or around yep. something, but the overall bell schedule for the day is not anticipated to change. No, no it's a 705 to yeah. the, the, the length of the school day will not change. What's gonna take place is that they're now going to an eight period day for all students. So in going to an eight period day for all students, and they also have a new wind block, in doing that, he did take a minute or two off the lab locker periods so that we could make sure that, um, 
all our minutes are met throughout the end of the school year. Speak of the devil, his ears were burning. <laughs> I, I don't know if you want to be here, but... <laughs> Chris, we're actually going right over the handbook stuff right now. And... Uh, and I would love to say yes, but I don't know if that ever wants to. I can, I can check that. I can actually, if you give me two minutes, I can go find out. It's not really about, just at the top you had mentioned it may, yeah. you know, the bell schedule may change. So that was all start was date, what I, you anticipate. I, I, Start time's the same, end time's the same. I believe we did change it because we just updated the new faculty members too. Like at the beginning, we have that disclaimer that staff updates will be done as needed. So I believe that is all updated in the handbook. Okay. And then um, superintendent helped me to understand the tardiness was, you know, increased to give a little more leeway, mm -hmm. not leeway, but, you know, the additional tardy before consequences. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're trying to help the students out a little more and give them a little more responsibility because that third one where they used to get a detention right off the bat, now they get a written warning. So we deal directly with the student more to say, okay, like this is for real. You could, you get a detention next time. Okay. Um, so my discussion in, uh, around this uh, handbook itself, again, is really gonna go back to, are we doing the best for the students um, around our strategic plan, right? Making decisions in the best interest of the students. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the 705 time again. Um, just because it's been 10 years since the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends. Schools don't start before 8.30. Um, last meeting, we looked at tardiness and you provided the reports um, and, and superintendent stated the goal is to keep tardiness under 1% of our population. Um, and the minutes we just approved um, showed that from 2015, the tardiness was 0.2. Um, in 2016, it was 0.3. Yeah. And it's been under one percent. Can I just clarify? That's the dropout. That's our dropout rate, not the tardy rate. Oh, dropout. Yeah, you're recording the the, the okay. percentage of dropout. I was like, I'm not going to get tardiness under one percent if I can't. <laughs> I'm going to write a book. Thank you. you know. <laughs> Thank you for right. Okay. So tardiness, and, and I guess so. Let me reframe my thought here. To your point, of pretend too. You said when a student's going to be tardy, if they know they're going to get punished, they'll just leave. They won't come for that day. Okay. So an absence. Mm -hmm. continues more absences and then they begin down the path and we don't want dropouts so essentially our dropout right now is is 1.5 mm -hmm. percent um, in the most recent reports and I just ask you know are we setting policies are we setting handbooks and bell schedules um, that's best for our students um, we, we just made a decision in the best interest of students uh, and they had an handsome middle to, to provide administration mm -hmm. right to support students and um, we talked about the medical issues here at the high school. We're supporting students in every way we can. Um, and, and I think if we can do better, um, we, we should continue to look at it. It was a goal two years ago, which, which didn't make it very far. Um, so I, in, in looking at this, that we're voting on here for the handbook, um, unfortunately, I can't support it. I, I've gotten to a point where I, I can't even support that mail schedule. Any, any other comments? Question? I think it's a different issue. Sure. Um, on the discrimination aspect of it, I have um, the word sex, which I'm taking to mean biological, male or female. And there's a word, page 48, gender identity. Who determines that identity? I, I would like this removed. Biological sex is male or female. I don't understand gender identity. Who determines that? other than their birth certificate. And I would like some words added to it, saying only females playing female sports, only males playing male sports. That feels like a much larger conversation. Yeah, it's a much larger issue. That would be an issue on itself that, that would be discussed. If you see other towns and places that discuss that, so it, it wouldn't be something that we could take up right now. That would be a, a larger discussion at another time that we could be. Okay. Right. Not to interrupt your discussion. No, that's fine. Just, just like, you know, like that's, a, that's a big to get discussion. that conversation going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We can add that as an agenda item. Yep. Yeah. But I would like the term gender identity removed. It's the law. 
It's, it's, so, it's, you could talk about yep. page 48, though. Page 48, Steve? Yes. That, but that is, that's what we have to put in because it's part of the Massachusetts law. So it's, it's part of Title IX of the 1972 Educational Amendments, Chapter 76 of the General Laws of Massachusetts as amended. So I can't get right in it. So we are bound legally that we have to put those things in our handbooks because that's what Massachusetts has determined as a law. So this is a quotation directly from? Yes, sir. I understand. Okay. Thank right. you, George. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All in favor of the handbook, please raise your hand. And again. Okay, so four two. Mm -hmm. Carries. Okay. Um, uh, we'll notice that there aren't other handbooks for us to go over. That's nope. because there are no changes other than it, um, teacher names, administrative mm -hmm. names, no changes in the elementary and middle school handbooks. That's why you do not have those. So there's no changes. Do we need to vote then if there's no changes? No. Changes. no. So it's voted last year. Okay. Not seeing the surplus. Okay. In your, uh, or just uh, in on the agenda, uh, we have quite a few surplus requests that we need to vote each individually, or you want to take them all as a group? No, I think we can take them all as a group. Okay. So uh, in, in, in ELA, uh, excess surplus of To Kill a Mockingbird. History Department is declaring book for place request principal in practice. Um, thinking about psychology, the science of mind and behavior. Uh, the Family Encyclopedia of American History. That's that's an oldie. Um, <laughs> so. And and even in E. Uh, okay, we, why don't we take books separately and then uh, cafeteria request yeah. after that. Yeah. So I'm looking for a motion and acceptance to declare these books surplus and, and dispose of them the best way we can. So moved. Second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? So, thank okay. you. Clean other closets. Uh, food services is declaring surplus broken, broken kitchen equipment. So the equipment that's broken, yeah. you're going to get rid of, but it has to be declared surplus first. That's a separate one. That's yes. The yep. Cabinets yep. and the microwave steamer. Yep. Easy. So can I have a motion on that? Please? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? I'm just got a note. Okay. Thank you. Now this isn't a, a surplus. This is a donation. Um, so we got a call um, from this vendor who is donating fifty-one thousand nine hundred dollars worth of scrubbers for our schools, and. They're going to be in route very soon, as soon as we accept those scrubbers that we can use in facilities. Go ahead, George. So what's nice about this is that these are not floor scrubbers. We originally thought they were. These are air scrubbers. So if you think back to COVID, when you were buying air or when at times of sickness in schools or hospitals, these are movable. They're on wheels, and they can be put in uh, high areas, like obviously like a second floor or a hallway or a stair case or if there's a school that's experiencing like there seems to be 47 kids out with a stomach bug at Conley, we can move these to there. Um, they, they have their HEPA filters and all of these pieces. The, the company had an excess. Uh, we made a connection with the company. So they called Dan Herstack, who is the office manager as it were. And so we graciously accepted them. Our goal is to put several in each building and then move them and use them as needed. Because they are moving, I mean, but they're, they're kind of big. They're about five feet high and they're wide, and, and um, but they are movable. Because of that, if there is a certain issue, like remember a few years ago, we had that bad thing in Conley and they get shut down for the day or whatever, um, we can then put more there after we do a deep clean so that we can try to keep the air as pure as can and keep the people healthy. I just need a motion. Motion to accept the um, <clears throat> 36 air uh, carrier opti clean air scrubbers uh, from DC any &E. do I have a second second okay any questions okay all in favor please okay seven all. and then one more donation I received this letter this letter is to inform you in the district of my attention on at our August 21st school committee meeting to donate a new Acer Chromebook plus 514 is my pleasure and an honor to be able to donate a Chromebook every year to the district for use just like any Chromebooks we have had for our students and staff. This year I would like to dedicate this donation in memory of our longtime standing Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee member, uh, Mr. Frederick M. Small, who passed on July 29, 2024. 
in addition, if letters of appreciation, uh, appreciation be sent to Miss Nancy uh, Hover Smith, uh, Small, Fred's widow, and to the children of Miss, Mr. Small, Janelle and John Smith, and John and uh, Jillian Cookson, thank you in advance for accepting this donation and allowing me to recognize Mr. Small. Fred will be greatly missed. Sincerely, Mr. Stephen D. Boyce. Okay. Steve. Motion to accept. Sir, do you want to say something, Stephen, before motion? Sure. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, I, I told Fred years ago, oh good, we're across from each other. Let's kick footballs like we used to make at high school. <laughs> you know, you always had to keep it light with Fred because you never knew what was coming next. <laughs> uh, he kicked my fanny just like he would kick anyone else's, but then he had some good news for me later. One of the proudest things I saw was uh, him talking with David and various things, and his willingness to help David. And David, I'm not signaling out you, but no, no, I'm glad you're new. Thank you. You know, this was a lot on your shoulders as as a teenager, turning just 20 at the time. I don't know, you're 86 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Real sometimes. But <laughs> I've always been proud of David, and, and Fred and the David thing just meshed in my head and. You know, I, I, David, you're going to carry on in such ways, and you kind of remind me a little bit of Fred. I don't want to say much. <laughs> you got the questions, and and you know the answers. You have thought out things. You research, but I know this is about Fred. But you know, a, a torch is always passed on, and um, so I wanted to kind of fit that in there. The other two things I'm doing is Fred's birthday's in January. He's a year younger than me. Um, when I'm at a Bruins game in January, or unless Mr. Farrow takes my tickets, <laughs> I want to put his um, happy heavenly birthday up on the Jumbotron at the TV Garden. I've done that for before, but the heavenly birthday part, um, happy birthday part is, you know, near and dear to me. And I plan on, as the president of the Board of Trustees at the Colbert Cemetery Association, having a moment of silence for Fred. I went and visited him a couple Mondays ago. Um, you know, he's right in the perfect spot. We take good care of things over there. We've been around a long time. And um, he's, up, up, he's not up on the hill with the Whitmans, but he's got a good view. <laughs> So, you know, I know it sounds like who I am. I just don't want to be too emotional, but um, Fred has added a lot, like um, Beth had said earlier. And um, you go back and forth with him for a little while, and then there's always, there seems to be this miraculous understanding. So I thank you all for accepting this. Yeah. Sure, sure, if I may. Yes. Um, can I share a few words, too, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of time to reflect uh, amongst a lot of things pertaining to the committee, but uh, specifically towards Fred. And I'd like to share just a couple of words from my own personal experience with Mr. Small that maybe the community and our colleagues on the committee aren't necessarily privy to. Um, you know, one of my first experiences with Fred was actually my freshman year of high school when it was a uh, committee member or a community member who would post uh, updates about the school committee. He's now on the board of selectmen, but one of the things he shared was a school committee meeting and a clip of Fred in the tag. And it was my first time watching the school committee meeting and learning about it. And flash forward a few years later, I'd have the opportunity to reach out and speak to these committee members um, as a student and trying to advocate for more services to our district. At that point in time, it was actually Fred and the chair of the school committee who had approached me gave me their phone numbers and said, if there is anything that you ever need or anything you want to share, please give us a call. And it was a few years later that, or a year or so, when I ran for school committee and won, one of the first people to actually reach out to me was Fred. And he said, please give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. And I was greeted with the uh, press one for Fred. And I, <laughs> you know, and, and I, I picked press one and Fred, there he was. And he thanked me and he said, if there's anything you need, you know, feel free to give me a call. And, you know, over the last few years, of course, you know, Fred and I, we've had our disagreements, particularly towards uh, the budget season, but Fred has helped me improve as a person. You know, he's challenged me, he's helped me think differently, and reflecting, of course, over the last year, I got to see a different side of Fred that wasn't necessarily reflective of, of the bureaucrat that people try to uh, project onto us who serve in these elected roles. 
I got to, you know, talk with Fred after meeting about, you know, cars after I bought mine or, you know, about family or just talk about different perspectives after we've had, you know, some terse deliberations and he's always been open and honest and he's treated me with respect and decency and it's those type of conversations and deliberations with understanding that we may have different objectives or a different pathway, but we have the same common goal of trying to improve our community and my experiences with Fred uh, will, will long last my time on this committee and I'm very appreciative of that, and that is how I will choose to remember him, and I'm very thankful for that, for that and I'm thankful for the opportunity. Okay, so we need a motion to accept. Motion. Oh, you did motion. Okay. No. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor of accepting. Thank you, Thank you, Ms. Boyce. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you folks. Some good news. Okay. So um, good, good evening, members of the school committee. I am pleased to get to share with you that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has awarded Hanson Middle School the 21st Century Grant. So um, this is the same grant that supports after school enrichment for the, the high school, Whitman Middle School starting next year. And as we had hoped, we will now support Hanson Middle School. Um, it is our plan to start September 30th in all three locations with transportation. And I just want to give a special shout out to Chris Skutek for all his work. He's our director, um, our coordinator for the program, for the grant program, and he does a lot of work. So I just wanted to publicly thank him. So we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Nikki. Mr. Marshall, Stephen. <clears throat> Okay, just to give everybody a heads up, uh, Stephen will be giving all of the paper information in, in our September meeting. This one he's giving us an overview. Uh, this is his first one actually presenting to us. Um, so if you have any questions, you can also ask. Thank you. Uh, just a few quick updates on, on kind of where we are. Um, uh, a few audits that everybody knows are still out there and, and happening. Um, our FY22 audit, we believe, is uh, complete. Uh, we had a last request uh, from the auditors on Monday for just a la last few items, which were provided. Um, so we hope uh, soon we will have you know some formal documentation back to them and, and be able to close out FY22, and we'll immediately start working on the 23 audit. Um, so that's just the update on, on where we are for audits. Uh, for FY24, our revenue um, uh, came in uh, $97,000 above uh, what was projected. I believe um, Mr. Stanbrook was uh, projecting around $100,000 over um, in our revenue for 24, so we came in just right there where he was um, projecting. We do have all of our revenues for 24 loaded into Munis. Uh, we continue to work on loading all of our expenditures from FY24 into Munis. At that point, we'll be able to close out FY24 and start working on the end of year report for DESE. Um, hoping to have that stuff uh, done through the fall, but it will take some time uh, to get everything kind of loaded uh, into Munis. For FY25, uh, we have our budget uh, totally loaded into Munis, and we have started um, our full accounts payable procedures are all happening um, in the Munis program. Uh, we've started doing training almost complete in the schools with our admins, um, principals, and so all purchase orders, all of our purchasing, all of our checks um, for FY25 are being cut out of Munis, and that has been happening. Um, so good news on that front as we uh, kind of move forward. We'll continue building and loading um, everything into the financial software program, and we'll be able to start reporting out to the committee and to the community out of um, the financial software program. And just to add on, on Stephen, again, the committee's been briefed on uh, John's role right now. He's doing some special projects, so he's closing out FY22, which has been hours and hours and hours of paper and reports. He'll start on FY23, and he's simultaneously working on the uh, request from the two communities that audit that is being run by um, uh, the person that's working with is Mr. King, uh, and John is working with him to get him all the information that he wants for the Whitman and Hanson audit of the school district. So John's working on three different audits at this point right now. Stephen's focusing in on closing 24 and into 25, and Munis is fully, or, um, it was gonna be fully up, so you're getting those paper reports um, sooner than later. 
Just a, yeah, the Mr. King. It, oh. He's working for the audit company that, it, and that sounds uh, so like this. K I N G King. Yeah, he's okay. the former business manager from Waltham, I believe. Thank you so much. Yeah, they, uh, they, they hired a person by the name of uh, Abrams. Mark Abrams. Mark Abrams. Mark Abrams. 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 working with this Mr. King. <coughs> and he's the former business director. The type of audit that they seem to be conducting is not like a forensic audit where you're just talking budgetary. They're looking at school district profiles. They're looking at paperwork. They're looking at procedures. So John has been working with him. They've both been, both are now retired business managers. So a lot of the things they're looking for, they have their own special lingo that they cannot, that they seem to be communicating well. So he's also working on that front too. And I think they, the towns had asked for a three month turnaround. So I think that puts us somewhere in October. Uh, but when we had our conversation with, with, with Mr. King, I said our priority right now is closing FY 22 and 23 because it has a direct impact on our borrowing for the building project. So um, he was he was clear clear with that. And again, it's it's not a, he a lot of heavy lifting, but it's still lifting. So we're we're being compliant and trying to get that done. FY 22 was a was a bear. I'll just tell you that um, 60, 70, 80 hours of man hours just on that. And they keep asking for more. Yeah, um, because when I talked to John two weeks ago, it, he had sent what he thought was the end, yeah. and then you said he got a few more. You got six after. more requests. Yeah. Six, how many? Six. Six more. So, Can I ask a question? Yes. Do Do we anticipate the FY twenty three audit is going to be similarly demanding well, or not? Okay. Not, this is not been able to front load that. Okay. Post breach. Okay. This was pre breach. Oh, okay. Got so, it. Thank you. So we should be okay. better. It's a better. It's a better process. Okay. Twenty three files are a little more yeah. digital. Yeah. Um, oh, good. <laughs> so it, it, it gets better. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And okay. just carry in case you didn't okay. know, um, a lot of that had to be done finding paper. Right. Uh, because everything was lost. Right. So that makes sense. The archives and the trailers, the trailer. forever. <laughs> there was yeah. information to dig. So yeah. this should be a lot. Twenty three should be a lot easier. Yes. So we had a question on FY twenty four close up. Um, what is the DESI deadline to submit end of year FY twenty four and if and do you expect meeting that if most of that information is so the deadline is September 30. Um, we have an extension request into DESI. Um, I do not expect to meet the September 30 um, deadline. Um, so we're, you know, hoping for a November 30 um, deadline if we can. Um, but it might be the end of the calendar year. But I, my, my hope is to not be, um, you know, past January. But I'll have a, I'll have a better update probably in a month from now um, once we get everything loaded into Munich. Our, our goal is really. November 30th, okay. we're going to shoot for it. But I mean, what we can't tell what's going to happen happens. So, Fine. you know, and, and, and the Associate Commissioner, Mr. Sullivan, knows Whitman Hanson very well. We're on a first name basis. <laughs> 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 well, like that. If we meet the November 30th, then it's my understanding it that this is yes. cash flow yeah. to get payments on the regional transportation reimbursement, which is typically funds in January and first half of the year. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Stephen? Thank you, Stephen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to just go into business? Or do you want to do business? Okay, I can do it. Okay. All right, so new business. Uh, tomorrow, um, for those of you who can make it, uh, tour is um, starts here um, at 10 a.m., goes to approximately 2. It de depends. We go from here, we go through the, the high school. From here, we go to Indian Head and then the middle, uh, Hanson Middle. And then we come back to Whitman and go to Duval and Conley and last is Whitman Middle. Um, that's what the tour is. Um, it, you know, it's very interesting because if you haven't been to all the schools, it's really um, good for people, you know, if you're from Hanson to see the Whitman schools, Whitman to see the Hanson schools, um, and to meet some of the administrators too that we get to meet. Um, and you find out about projects that had to be worked on over the summer, um, anything that needed to be fixed or things that they're still working on. Um, so, uh, if you can make it, we'd appreciate you here at 10 a.m. If you are unable to make it at 10 but would like to, you can just text Jeff and he'll tell you where we are if we're at a different building and you could meet us at that building. Sure. And if yeah. you don't have my number, let me uh, get it yeah. up. I'm just not going to say it on over. 
I don't get every every kid's gonna be like, when we when we cancel school, when does snow day? Snow day, you can just email me. Yeah, you guys all should have my 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 phone anyway. This is um. So I'm waiting for. I wait for Beth. Yes, nice. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to ask about the um additions for the special ed that we had transferred over. Yep. Well, that is that finished? Yes. We get a sense of that. Yep. Okay. Thank You'll you. be surprised at how different it is. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Great job. Very thank good. you. Yeah, it's really thank good. Thank you. Um, just speaking of the tours, I was telling Jen, but as might as well let you folks know, depending on the night at the museum at JFK tonight, in the iPads, if they don't run around the museum. I should be good to go, but I just, I'll let you know in the morning. Okay. Yep. Should be texting. Whatever, you know, whenever you can make it. Okay, um, so we have um, school committee vacancy in the process to fill. Um, so uh, selectmen uh, decided uh, they did last night. Um, it is going to be, po we're going to post it. We'll, we'll post be it. post it. Um, and the process is that it'll go out. They will have, um, two weeks to submit um, their resumes. And from there, um, the Mary Beth Cotter, the administrator of, um, of Whitman, will give all of us, uh, all Whitman members, um, copies uh, for you to peruse. And then it was determined that the 12th of September we were going to meet as, but one of our members is not gonna be able to make the 12th, so we have been asked actually by the selectmen if we could change the date. So we don't have an official date right now, but it'll either be the last week in September or the first week in October. I'm going to talk to Mary Beth tomorrow and decide, but this just came up this morning, so we not have. So if you know anybody who is interested, tell them to update their resume and get it in. It is a little bit tough to do. Um, I had, that's how I got on. <laughs> because you submit your resume, if they accept it, you go and you have to go before the five and five members um, and they each ask a question, or they qu or like Fred asked me three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fred, again. Um, and you're trying to remember what, what was the second question. Um, and, and you're on TV um, and then they vote and choose at that point in time. Um, and so with that, then we would have a new member would have to go um, before the town and go town clerk, okay, and get sworn in. Now, that position would only last until May election for to fill in. Fred's was a, he just got elected, so he has a person has to run. The term will only be two years if they run in May. So that'll be a two-year term. Stephen, I think you had to do a sure. two-year term too. Yes. So um, it's the same as that. So they finish out this year, they have to run, and it'll only be a two-year term instead of a three because they're finishing Fred's out. Okay, so just to let anybody know. Yes, Rosemary. So I had some concern with this because I kind of dove into the laws a little bit. It looks like there's been a correction because when you did it, the selectmen had done it, and that's not appropriate. The selectmen... Uh, we're our own body under 71 and so just like they can't dictate the budget so it's supposed to be the school committee the governing body is the school committee it is not under any no it is we have but we just it is not the selectmen right. so it, and that has been a, clarified it's a joint meeting. It's a oh, joint meeting. it shouldn't be actually and we can go back and we should double check this it has to be the school committee that picks it we are the legal governing body and uh, it was improper when it was done before. That, that's our regional agreement, though. So our Isn't regional that? agreement is, is off. So the regional agreement is is a joint venture between the select board. Could you? And uh, could, I'm, I'll double check it because sure. I have it at home. But could you tell me what part of the regional agreement that it's? The selection of members, um, and if a member vacates, um, thank you. It's a joint. So and it's a, each school committee member that's left has an equal vote, as each board of selectmen member has an equal vote. So when, when Chris Howard left in Hanson, there were five select board members and only three school committee members. Uh, so it was an eight member vote um, in Whitman, because there are six members, it'll be a five and five vote of the- So it's uh, Whitman's- so Whit Only Whitman, right. only, okay. it's only it's the town that the person yeah. leaving that office of the town that they represent. Yes, Kara? Can I, sorry, can I just go back? So, cause I was actually gonna ask this question and I think, sure. I think I'm clear on the answer, but um, I was, I was, so I remember Beth when you were um, brought on to the school committee and then when Chris 
um, stepped away. Mm -hmm. I thought there was an election. Did he re did he resign his position coinciding with the election? So there was no intro. So the reason is just that gap between the election yeah. and yeah. Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank he you. Resigned like. It, yes, it to coincide. Yes, so. okay, that's what I thought. Correct. Yeah. Thank and, you. And Chris, yeah, he, he, he announced that he was resigning at the election, so election night was Okay, that. I just wanted to make sure the process would, was the same between towns. It, that's what I wanted to clarify. Because so, we, go by, yeah. we yes. go by the rap, so that's it. Okay, yes, Don. Um, you mentioned the school committee is going to post. So can you clarify again for people watching? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who do they need to email that they're interested? Uh, it'll be on there, but it'll be, it goes to Mary, the resumes get sent to Mary Beth Carter, the town administrator for Whitman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you say post, is that, what is the Well, post? I was going to announce that it's uh, open. Is it going to be on our website? It'll be on our website. It should be on the town website as well. Okay. And I would like to put something in the express. Just that there's a vacancy. Should there be a public? Does there need to be a public notice? Like, I think there should be just yeah. like a vote. What, uh, what, what do you mean a vote? Like just like you would, we'd want the public to be aware that there's openings, just like we would sure. for an election. So, so that that's why that's the it comes from the clerk as well and over at town hall. Okay. And, and from our side of it, we would put it on our website that there's a vacancy, and this is the process to fill that vacancy. And and we did the agreement that you know, we didn't have a joint meeting to discuss the dates mm -hmm. because we knew selectmen were meeting last night we were meeting tonight and so we had the discussion of what worked and but because of a date for the end which doesn't really it don't and i should say this is against what it says on the rack by the way the agreement um, it is against that because of the timing it's supposed to be 30 days yeah. but we thought that was very disrespectful to fred to Correct. do 30 days from Right. the date that he died that right. so we, we were in agreement the selectmen uh, agreed with me when i you know when i suggested could we just you know kind of suspend that rule for this and for this appointment so yes John. So i had one more follow-up so i respect that one of our members is not available september 12th so just looking ahead to the dates you mentioned perhaps the joint meeting yeah what may not be until October right so our meeting is scheduled in October early on the 9th so yeah I we would think that, that the first meeting. a joint meeting can be scheduled before October it is 9th. It, it is because I would want that that whoever uh, yeah. when I spoke to, to Carl Kowalski, Kowalski so that's this, what yeah. I wanted to talk yeah. through these dates right when I spoke to Carl, Dr. Kowalski um this morning um he suggested October and I said well if it's going to be October it needs to be the first week because we have a meeting after that and we would like to have that Thank person you. here mm -hmm. um, you know sworn in and here yeah. you know I don't want these spaces okay now along with that we have somebody who would like to speak tonight gotcha. Thank you. Uh, you know one of my unique experiences um, at growing up in our community which has guided my decision making over the last five years was the opportunity to live in and attend both schools in Whitman and Hanson. Um, as a teenager, when deciding whether to pull nomination papers and run for office, I asked myself, what does it mean to be a leader? I came to two conclusions during those internal deliberations. One, I decided that being a leader meant not having to be the most intelligent individual in the room, but being receptive and understanding of each other's strengths and utilizing those abilities in the areas warranted when those moments are justified understanding who is best fit for the particular situation and uplifting them to be successful in the endeavor what will help us succeed collaboratively, collaboratively as a community. Prioritizing the success of the collective over our individual needs is what makes for a successful leader. They need to make those decisions earnestly to withstand the objective yet judgmental view through the lens of hindsight. The second conclusion I came to took me back to my days at Hanson Middle School. At the age of 12, Long before I was aware of my interest in history and politics, a teacher was already keenly aware that my passion was there. Mrs. Bloss would pull me aside after mock debates in class asking, have you ever thought about being a lawyer? <laughs> it was Mrs. Bloss who shared with the class a story that has never left my mind from the moment it was spoken to us. That is the story of Cincinnatus. It is a story about a Roman farmer who came out of retirement multiple times to serve his constituency during a period of need but, rel but relinquish that responsibility and absolute power that came with it when the original objective he was called upon had been served. 
setting an example of the importance of understanding the responsibility that comes with position to power bestowed upon someone at any level of elected office, the need to evaluate the health of the institution consistence, consistently, and understanding that any institution dependent on one individual for too long in our democracy is reflective of a failure of those who have been serving it. Perfecting a better union is understanding the importance of the constant change and deliberations that come with it. Serving and leading our communities during times of need only, not letting ego or desire impede our judgment. Our communities are most robust when we elevate and educate the public, providing them with a support network to get involved and also an understanding of the issues at hand. I campaigned at the age of 19 to change our community's culture, deliver an ambitious platform of services for our district, and empower student voices to represent McKinley-Vento, foster youth, and students struggling with circumstances beyond their control. Understanding the significance of the impact left by the Great Recession and opioid epidemic as someone who grew up in it and now witnessing a whole generation of youth now dealing with the aftermath of a pandemic. Since I left high school and ran for office, nine out of ten of our school committee members, four out of five Hanson Select Board, and three out of five of Whitman Select Board have left office. We've had a sweeping change of representation across the community, which is more optimistic, welcoming, and supportive of the next generation of leadership. Over the last few years, I've seen our community's culture shift in a direction more reflective of our community as a whole. Parents have organized, used their voices, and helped deliver results that will impact our community for generations, such as the expansion of early childhood education and the new middle school in Whitman. That said, it is most appropriate at this time for the torch to be passed to the next generation of young parent leaders who are ready to represent our district and lend their voices and experiences to the next emerging generation. I will resign as, Whitman represent, as a Whitman representative to the PK through 12 Whitman Hanson Regional School Committee effective September 1st. I will send my formal resignation to the town clerk. I will continue to build upon the foundation of my experiences learned here by pursuing higher education to expand my capacity to contribute. Before the retirement of former facilities director Ernie Sandlin, Ernie asked me a simple question that I struggled to answer. He asked me, what have you learned? For so many years now, I've gone back and forth, lacking clarity in a dignified response that I found would be sufficient and lasting. After much consideration, I'd like to extend my response to Mr. Sandlin, our colleagues on the committee, and our community as a whole. You must never lead with indignation, regardless of any circumstances that have caused a believed justification of such emotions. Some of our most significant opportunities for growth are from our dissenters. Understanding views we wouldn't necessarily be privy to unless we took the time to listen. Ideology does not dominate the mindset of this committee, but personality and life experiences help guide and shape our views. Empathy has been our greatest asset in achieving results these last few years. Unity over the shared belief that we may have different approaches, but a common goal of improving our community. I would look towards no tuition, full day kindergarten, K through 10 school choice, and even last year's reaffirmation of the budget as a few examples. It would be naive to suggest that everyone who disagrees with you does so from a constructive standpoint. Regardless of the origin of their nature, you must approach the situation the same way, with an open mind, a willingness to learn, and a passion for your community. Our capacity to help our community is determined by our ability to educate and build relationships with those within it. We should look past politics and towards a shared belief that people want an excellent education for their kids, a safe and healthy environment to live in, and affordability to choose the life they wish to pursue. Developing a community-first network mitigates an ineffective bureaucracy that feels to be more responsive, responsive to the collective's needs. Leading in a public office involves prioritizing the needs of our community when making difficult decisions. It's about setting an example and doing what you believe is suitable for the longevity of the constituency we represent, making decisions earnestly and not based on what's expedient or popular. Thank you to my teachers for providing me with the tools needed to succeed in this role. These experiences have shaped and guided me. Thank you to my colleagues on the committee for everything. My time here has set the foundation for how I can contribute going forward. I want to specifically thank Don Byers for not only believing me as far back as my senior year at only 18 years old, but for giving me the motivation to run at 19 and supporting me onwards to be at my best. Thank you for our community. 
which put the belief behind a teenager just out of high school. It's the parents I've never met walking out of town hall on election day with their kids pointing my way, mouthing, I voted for you. Or the people who pulled me aside while walking around town to thank me for what I'm doing. You folks have provided me all the motivation in the world. I thank you. If we are to hold these beliefs, our district motto will remain true. Semper ad maiora, always towards the greater. My friends on the committee, I thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. Are you going to law school? <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Someday. You'll Good be down to you. my brother's office. I'm sure he'll take you. <laughs> so, as you can see, folks, now this changes that we now have two positions that are going to be open. So, we are going to. Um, I need to talk to the town of Whitman, too, again, and but we will be advertising for two. So, come May, there will be four people chosen in May because two to finish. Um, Is it all in Whitman? It's all, it's all in Whitman. Whitman. Yeah. yeah, it's all Whitman. Yeah. So, we, the. Well, we're not saying that because Steve, I know, has to run. Yeah, that, and, yeah well. just not where we're at right now. It'll be two three year terms, one two year term, and one one year term. Yeah. I have a. Uh, you going to run again, Mr. Boyce? Well, I have a printed <laughs> stuff that says. Um, Fourth voice, 2026. <laughs> I got to get him on the phone. Right? <laughs> on the phone right now. David, so, thank you for your time. Yeah, you know what I, you mean to me, man. Yeah. At least we still got Dunkin' Donuts. No. <laughs> we still got another week, and I'll be here tomorrow too for the tour. I will serve until I can. And Put me in a headlock. I Remind me want, of, of what Fred used to do. Yeah, I want to speak uh, on behalf of the committee, and everybody can, you know, go talk to David afterwards. But. Um, a voice of youth uh, that we had on here before I got on um, and before you know when I used to listen to David um, voice his opinion sometimes louder and longer than maybe we wanted but always uh, true to himself and I thank you for being that person who is always true to yourself David we will miss you greatly and it's nice to have you here that we can say that unlike you know for Fred but we can tell you how much we have appreciated you being on this committee um, and we will miss you definitely and when you are at school break or whatever come on in and come to a meeting and visit don't tempt me yeah. <laughs> so we have to know where you're going to school what's going on here well um, you can always ask afterwards you know we'll figure it out in time but yeah no I, the sweatshirts we're gonna get the he, yeah, he, right, he does right. listen we spent many a time in the car driving around we talked about you know and, and it's bittersweet because david said this tonight um, but it's bittersweet because he's done a really nice job on the committee. But I'm so happy for you to move into what you want to do yep. too. It's pretty cool. So is it law? <laughs> you know. So I'm sure I'll be. Good luck to you. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and I. Chairman. Has, has Chairman. Oh, God, sorry. Don't May I, since David recognized my name, sure. speech? Um, I don't know what your next steps are, but you will be missed. Mm -hmm. And yes, that was powerful um, when we had an email connection by chance because you had reached out to the school committee mm -hmm. and um, that those were contentious times um, when I first got on as well so um, I do appreciate what you've uh, given to the committee and the town and thank you thank you thanks okay. we're done so, uh, public no public, any no public comments, sir? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's, it's still got exact session. Yeah, we have exact session. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, we need um, a roll call vote to go into executive session. The executive session is to discuss. The reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. Motion to go into executive session. Second. Second. Okay. And we'll Cara? Second. Did yep. you just say yes? Yes. 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 Rosemary? Yes. David? Yes. Uh, Don? Yes. Steven? Yes. Steven? Yes. Me? Yes. We're in executive session. <laughs>